Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show, I'm joined by top photographer who goes around with all the stars, Dennis O'Regan. Also joining me today is boy band Exposure, who have come into the studios to sing one of their latest covers. My first guest is a man that's travelled the world as a tour photographer with many of the top international bands, but he joins us here today in the studios in Birmingham to launch his new book, Careless Memories. We welcome Dennis O'Regan. Dennis, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Wonderful to have you here on Cup of TV. So, Dennis, let's start right at the very beginning. You were a photographer when? When did you start becoming a photographer? In the mid-70s. When I first got access to bands, it was punk because you only had to pay 50 pence 40 years ago and then you could get into photograph anyone you wanted. So, Is that right? Yeah. I didn't realise that. Yeah, so you didn't really need a pass. So that way I shot The Clash, The Damned, everyone. So, and also then as they rose up from the clubs up to bigger theatres. Oh, that's great. And then, so from there, how old were you then when you started doing that? I was 20, mid-20s, mid mm. yeah. So, and I'd been on an interrail trip around Europe before that and got the travel bug. So what I decided to do was combine my love of music and travel and photography and go on tour with rock bands. And was it your rock bands that were your passion? Yeah, it was really. Yeah, the first band I toured with was, was Thin Lizzy. Oh, so yes. uh, Phil Linnett, I was at Phil Linnett's house because someone I knew lived with him. And then he said, uh, we're off to Scandinavia. And I just said, take me along. So he said, OK, so he did. And I spent two weeks on the road with Thin Lizzy and thought, this looks like fun. So then the next year I ended up going to photograph one Rolling Stones show and then did the same thing. <laughs> they said, <laughs> they said um, we've got 72 photographers here today. And I, I said, oh, God. I said, who's the official photographer? And they said, we don't have one. I said, I'll do it. They Thanks. said, we couldn't ask you, but since you've asked us, I'll go to the band and ask them. And I went down, I shot one show, and then that turned into a week, which turned into two weeks, a month, two months. So it was your combination then, really, of your love of travel and my cheekiness. And, and your cheekiness <laughs> and your love of music. Yeah, yeah, it so, was the music first, really. I mean, when I was really little, I made my mother take me to see the Beatles. So I was a fan from when I was about five or six. So music just was my life all the way through, really. And have you ever worked with Paul McCartney? I have. I've worked with him. Um, I shot the Cavern show that he did in 1999, and I had exclusive access to that. And I also shot it digitally and uploaded all the photographs for the, for the national papers the next day. So. I shot them, I, I uploaded them from underneath the stairs, from a little cupboard under the stairs in the cavern. But then um, I was on tour with David Bowie and there was two weeks off and Paul McCartney's manager asked me to come down to rehearsals at Paul's um, mill in Sussex and um, just to shoot rehearsals. But I knew what it was, it was an audition because every band I'd been on tour with, or they, they audition you for a day or a two days or a week just to oh, see just if you're going to be like. boring yes. or fun. Mm. So uh, clearly I was fun for most of them, but with so. Paul McCartney I was a bit overawed and I was boring. So, <laughs> yeah, so I failed that audition. <laughs> so I went back on tour with David Bowie and uh, yeah, and then I did, um, I shot Queen all the way through their career really, because they started when I started. But, and then so on their last ever tour, which was their biggest, um, I was their official photographer, so. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, Queen yeah. are just, you know, yeah. are such an, a, a, yeah. a legendary, iconic band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've worked with so many, but we'll stay with Queen just for a, a moment. But what was it like working with someone like that? I mean, were you in awe of them, or did you just actually get in the mood and start oh, photography and forget you? Yeah, I was used to it all by then, really. Yeah, mm. so, um, yeah, it, I wasn't really in awe of them anymore because I'd seen them perform so often. Um, and then spending time with people day in, day out, you kind of lose that awe a bit. Mm. Because your photographs are very much capturing the moment, yeah, not just on the stage. It's yeah. having a cup of tea. Yeah, it's documentary. Um, you know, it's, it's yeah. writing, it's reading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, what are your favourite photographs that you take, Dennis? Is it, is it that sort of more natural shot? Sitting around the dressing room, yeah, or just on a plane, hanging around. Depends how people look. If they look great, then they look good anywhere, really, in any conditions. But one of my favourite Queen pictures is, doesn't even feature the band, really. It's their helicopter arriving over their last ever show. So I'm in one helicopter, they're in the other one, and then below us is the 150,000 people, which was their last ever audience. So sometimes it's just stuff like that, which yeah. wasn't arranged until 10 minutes beforehand, so you, know, you can never tell. Mm. So do you, often, do you just have your camera with you everywhere? 
No, not really. No. I mean, in the evenings, I didn't really, I didn't really like it. Really? So, Why is that? Oh, well, time off. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I just carried around I've all during the day. Yeah, snow, capture this, it? capture that, capture the yeah. other. Yeah. You know, sort of like David Bowie picking his luggage up off yes. the carousel at the airport. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. It sounds a bit boring, and it probably is. <laughs> so then, in the evening, when everyone wants to go out, I want to do the same mm. thing. Really, just go mm. out and have fun. And now you've recently produced this book. So tell us about careless memories. Tell us about that. It's Duran Duran on tour when they arrived in America and became the biggest band since the Beatles. So, although they didn't know that was going to happen, so I mean that's dropped there. The biggest band since the Beatles. I mean that's in America, incredible yeah. in America, yeah. Because the Beatles, as we know, were a yeah. worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, so. exactly. And you were there right from the very beginning, were you? Yeah. So I arrived with them from Japan, and um, when they got there, it was hysteria. The press was fairly hysterical. It was twenty years to the month since the Beatles had first arrived. Oh. So um, it was Duran mania. And then they featured on the cover of Rolling Stone as the Fab Five, which was obviously the equivalent of the Fab Four for the Beatles. Mm. So it was really huge. And they were the first MTV bands, the first video band, really. Mm. And I remember, I remember their videos. Their videos were very yeah, exactly. iconic. Way yeah. ahead of their time, I yeah. always thought. Yeah, exactly. Know. Did you think that as yeah. a photographer? Yeah, and they did long, long form videos, mm. which people hadn't really done until then. So they arrived and it was mayhem. So I was in the middle of that. None of us realised they were quite big here already, but no one knew they were going to be that big in America. And they still are. They're still playing ten mm. to twenty thousand a yes, night. Yes, they still are. And so, yeah. what, just, what made you decide to do this book? It was because I'd taken all those pictures, and at the time, I often thought I'd like these pictures to be in a book. So we did a book at the time, which was more a fan book. So what I really wanted to do was feature all those black and white pictures I'd taken that were a lot more moody and blow them up into a, a larger version. So and. Um, as we were saying earlier, to control the book, to yes, use the pictures yes, I wanted yes. to use the way I wanted to use yes, them. Yes, because you've done books before, haven't you? But yeah. they've been published by... The normal, publishers normal publishers, and the band arranged it, yeah. So this is your first book that you've actually published yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, as you say, you've got more control over what yeah. went in it. Was yeah. that important to you? Yeah, and the band were involved. So Sam Le Bon wrote lyrics to um, a song for each of the five top books. And they um, supplied us with golden tickets so people can go, whoever buys those books can go and see the band and meet them. So there are all these limited edition prints, you know, very yes. rare prints that mm. were printed in 1984 and new ones that I've done that are much more arty. So, so it's sort of, of collectors, yes. it's a collectible thing. I was going to say, it's something really then that people can look at yeah. and admire, but yeah. also put away, put away for, for the, the prosperity, yeah, yeah, prosperity yeah, exactly. really. Yeah, which is and what the band's doing. Yeah. <laughs> And the photographs are in it, you say that and some have never been seen before? Some have never been seen, yeah. And some of the prints are, are photographs that have never been seen that aren't in the book. So it's kind of a, a very... Very selection. Yeah, was that again? Was that important to you? Because you've presumably had these photographs for many years. Yeah. Did, did you want to share them, or were you thinking you no, were quite I wanted protective to of them? No, I wanted to share them. Yeah. And sometimes they were pictures I took because I wanted them to be in a book at some point. But I just it took thirty years to get around to doing that book, where you just had one of them. All you can see is his feet, his bare feet up on the table, and then a bo empty bottle of Bollinger next to his feet. And it was a nice picture at the time, but no one's ever going to use that picture, mm -hmm. except me so that when I got round to doing that book, I was able to use those kinds of pictures. And you, you've just released this book now, so yeah. that's available for people, for anybody to buy, is that right? Yeah, from the website, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can buy and them then online. From, and then Duran Duran are supporting it, so that, yep. I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah, which is fantastic. Uh, are you going to be doing another? Are you going to be working with any of the other bands? Uh, well, the next, ba the next book mm. is about punk, which um, I covered almost everyone. So I, did, I shot Sid Vicious the night before he left England to go to America, and he never came back because he died. And um, we were in the dressing room. It was him and other members of the Sex Pistols and, and Nancy Sponge and people who were supposed to be in the Sex Pistols but never were. They're all in this room. And um, I was going to take my picture. And then Sid Vicious says, five pounds, he said, or I, I'll smash your camera. Right. <laughs> so obviously there was something that brewing. Yeah. <laughs> so the manager says, I'll pay, I'll pay. You know, and he gives Sid Vicious five pounds and Sid goes, each. You know, so everyone in the room had to get a fiver. So, um, and then he disappeared and, and he was, um, I, mean, I think he just, that was just part of his image, the whole smash your camera thing, because mm. then he's talking to a fan, giving him advice on how to get into a band and what he should and shouldn't do. And, yeah. See, often yeah. they have, um, artists have personas, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. I was going to ask you that, because obviously yeah. you get behind the scenes. Yeah. So did you notice, there was there a difference in when they go on the stage and yeah, perform? Yeah, huge. And then they come off the stage and they're completely different? Yeah, huge, quite often. Some don't change that much. But some, it's um, it's not that they're, it's that the performing changes mm. people. It just mm. it makes them what they really are. Mm. I think some of them, 
But I, I think mean, as a performer, you have to put on yeah, a performing yeah. act, don't yeah. you? I think that's yeah. quite natural. Mick natural. Jagger isn't Mick Jagger until he's on stage, yeah. really. Yes. And Freddie Mercury is very shy. Mm. So, but on stage, he was outrageous. So there was a real, real difference. Yeah. You know, the same kind of person, but just a different side mm. of them. And is there, was there a favourite? Can you say a favourite? No, not really. <laughs> but, <laughs> Somebody you enjoyed working with? Well, I was a huge, huge fan. Bowie fan. Mm. So, of course, being with him, for, I spent two years with him, day in, day out. So that was a lot. And Queen, I was a huge, huge mm. fan. So, so it was a crowning glory ones. doing that last tour. Yeah, yes. so Queen, I think we're going to do, yeah. yeah. A big one with them. And hopefully Bowie. Mm. Uh, Thin Lizzy, Rolling Stones doing them all, you see. Mm. Got so many pictures on all those yes. different bands. You can do, devote a book to each. You're going to be very busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Careless Memory book is only a three month period, yeah. but it's a huge book. It's, it's incredible. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure to meet you, Dennis. Thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for coming thank you very on the much. show. Right, stay with us. We're just going to take a quick break, but come back and join us again in just a sec. Welcome back to Cup of TV. I'm now joined by boy band Exposure, who are here today. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, boys, let me start. So, introduce yourself. So, we've got Giles. Giles. I'm Ryan. Jake. Jamie. Excellent. So, guys, how did you get together, Giles? How did you all get together? Um, well, basically, um, we were formed uh, nine months ago uh, by our manager. Um, and basically, uh, well, I'm sure Ryan will tell you how he. We all met yes, differently. Yeah, so you, so. All, you, you all didn't know each other, is that no, right? No. So, how, so you tell us, We kind of knew of each other. I knew Jay was off of X Factor and I knew Ryan off of Facebook because he went really big on Facebook off a song he wrote. And um, basically, Mum, like, I, I wanted to get into singing because I was sick of, like, like, I was going to college to do uh, sound engineering. It's kind of what I, like, that's what I wanted to get into, like music kind of stuff. Mm. So you were always by. interested in music yeah, then? Yeah, I love yeah. it, I love it so yeah. much. Um, and then you met... Ryan? Yeah, I was by him in Glasgow and I, like, I'm not going to lie, I fangirled a little bit. I was kind of like, oh my God, it's Ryan. <laughs> so I went up and I was like, how are you doing, man? And then I started singing and then he was like, he, he recorded me and sent it across to uh, Jason. And then uh, he, Jason got in touch with me and said, do you want to be in a band with Giles and Ryan? And I was like, yeah. That's so, so Ryan, what formed. did you do? What were you doing um, before? I was a solo artist um, and I had, I had like, done covers on YouTube and stuff. Um, and I wrote a song that done pretty well, got in the charts and stuff like that. And um, that's when I think Jason spotted me, and um, we started talking. It was nothing about joining a band or that, because I was, I was, I was really determined to be solo for so long. Mm. And then I don't know. I think the opportunity came up to join the band, and I thought it's something different. Mm. So I'll give it a try, and it's best. best sometimes, thing I've ever done. sometimes that happens, though, doesn't it? Sometimes yeah. you have a, a, you know, a way that you feel you're going to go, and mm. then suddenly something can happen, and mm. then you change that direction. Yeah. How about for you, Jake? What, what, what was your how me, did you get I, to I jumped guys? straight into the deep end of this because mm. I'd never really had much experience. I didn't like, because I didn't post videos or anything like that. But I was always been a singer, always been a performer. But I, I followed Giles on Facebook from the show, mm. and then he put a post out looking for people for the band. So I put myself forward and I harassed Jason, the manager, <laughs> to get me. I, li I literally yeah. wouldn't leave him yeah. alone. Like messages like every hour, like I forgot it, I forgot it, I forgot it. <laughs> But it worked. Yeah. And it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. That's a, that's a story you. there for everyone who's, who's looking yeah, to be a yeah, musician. So, Josh, you were on X Factor. Uh -huh. So, tell us about that. Um, well, probably the craziest six months of my life, really. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm so grateful that I went on the show. You know, it was it was a dream of mine to go on it where, when I turned 16, and mm. uh, I really, really enjoyed it so much. Mm. And I'm privileged because I wouldn't be sitting here today and we with these four boys no matter what so like everything happens for a reason isn't it? Yeah, exactly yeah and uh, and when you when you got together so how did you get together so your manager brought you all together then what did you do so I mean it's very difficult you know it must be just we were complete strangers strange, apart like, from really like, yeah we, we just kind of we all got booked a train into Warrington when it and mm. then we just kind of went in this car and then <laughs> I was I was in the back I remember I was sitting right in the back and um he made me sing like Jason made me sing, but no one else had I to sing so in the shy. car. I was so, so shy. shy. So we had a lot of people think it's like really difficult for us to meet up, but we we'll basically love each other. We're yeah, yeah. We, we, we're always mm. with each other. Always. And it's funny because when we leave each other, we instantly miss each other, and we always we have like our own special group chat on Facebook yes. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But we just talk about it. No one ever talks. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you've been together for nine months, yeah, is that right? Yeah, so I mean, that's a relatively short amount of time, isn't yeah. it? To be Don't forget together. it's our anniversary, year oh. anniversary on August the 17th. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So yep. have a party and everything. Right, tell us a bit about what you're actually doing. So um, um, Yeah, we've, we've been on, we've done three UK tours, um, toured with Bars and Melody. So three UK cool. tours, I mean, yeah. that's incredible, that's it's great. We've done a lot of like, mm. really good artists. Been all yeah. over the place. Who, like, have you, who have you toured with? No, well, don't worry. Uh, Nicholas McDonald, Harvey, uh, Bailey McConnell, the Brooks, like just loads of people that, like, do you know what I mean? Loads, loads of people that done really well on um, the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and stuff like that. Um, we've been touring with them and it's been amazing. It's, it's, it's gave us a lot of, it's gave us a really good platform mm. and gave us a good it's fan base as well. No, it's but as, as well as like um, doing all that, it's, it, we were very like rushed into it all. I mean, I'd been on stage before and obviously like, Ryan had done a lot and so like. Um, it was quite hard to like gel as a band. Uh, st- being a soloist, it's like you want to own the stage all to yourself, and it's quite hard to share. Mm. Like, but with doing all these tours and all these gigs that our manager have got us, it's helped us gel as a band, and it's so important as a band. I mean, the singing is the easy bit, but it's mm. it's like actually being best friends. That's what you got to be, mm. and then people can see that on stage, and that's what you have to portray when you're mm. in a band. It's just. It's just crazy. I and think. do you get on? It's about yeah, well, you're not going to get. You have to tell me that. Yes, <laughs> no, like, this is just <laughs> an act. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who I'm sitting next to. <laughs> no. <laughs> so no. you've got you've got you've gelled, which is great, though, isn't it? Because it couldn't, it needn't have gone like that, had it? Mm. Something mm. could have happened. You yeah. might not have got on. But so you're go, you're going to be touring. So Jake, tell us where are you going? What's happening? Have you got any dates? Yeah, we we're touring. We're going on the Nest tour, which we're going all around the UK. The Nest um, tour, N E S. Yeah. Okay, N E S. Yep. The dates have slipped my mind. So. It's in July. No, no, it's in it's July, July, I believe. I've got them here, don't yeah, worry. Exactly. July the 24th to July the 31st. Yeah, yeah. That's your Nest tour. So that's a big tour. Mm, but yeah. before that, you've got something else coming um, up as well. You've got... got a um, few gigs, yeah. Yeah, you've, got, you've got the uh, Dapper. Dappy. Dappy. Dapper. 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 <laughs> Dapper. Yeah, like Dapper, Dapper and 911. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling my age now. <laughs> so that's in May. But you've got quite a lot of um, gigs, and I mean, you've played with some really good artists. So yeah. is this what you thought it was going to be like, Ryan? Because you've not just as, said. Not as soon as this, I don't think. I, yeah, I thought it would take when, a while, yeah. but it's, we're getting around mm. really, really quickly, and it's, it's crazy. Now, why do you think that is? Uh, why do you management. think. Well, because. We, I think it's we have a ginger. Let's no, no, <laughs> no, it's it's because we're four great lads who have mm. massive personalities, a bundle of confidence, and I think people just sort of latch onto that, and mm. that's what it is. Got to give credit to our manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. definitely. He's kept us grounded, and he's he's mm. just done so much for us. And like, mm. I mean, he, it's always like he's behind the scenes, but mm. like. It's crazy because the fans actually love our manager so much. <laughs> yeah, they, mean, like, they love him more than um, what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because um, <laughs> somebody brought a poster to our gig and said, and it's wrote, I'm only here for Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, guys, you've got to change that. That's all got to change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Jamie, what? So you, you mean you're all together now? Pra- yeah. Do you practically live together? In so to speak. I mean, you know, 24 hours a day. Like, we're around hotels a lot in like Liverpool, mm. and like we do, mm. we do a lot of rehearsing in Liverpool mm. as well in rehearsal studios. Like mm. we do put a lot of time in rehearsals. I think mm. we, we also we do like fun do, stuff yeah. as well, don't we? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. do like we go bowling and stuff. And do you? Yeah, well, which is good though. It's important, isn't yeah. it, to have some yeah. downtime? And do you write your songs or do you covers? Yeah. You do do both. Well, we're writing just now. With really big writers, um, people who have worked with Madonna and um, the Saturdays. We're gonna, we're gonna keep like those songs back though, so we're not allowed to like, you know, like, mm. play them great. out. And stuff. The stuff that's like cooking at the moment. Yeah. Right? yeah. Cooking. It's I like that. You're gonna have to go, I like that word, cooking. Yeah. You're gonna have to good at all this stuff. Oh, you there, see, but you're good, you're gonna perform for us now. So you're gonna have to do a little song, which is gonna be wonderful. So you're gonna do Chasing Cars, yeah. cover of Chasing Cars, which is gonna be great. So, guys, thank you so much. Thank Wait there, thank you. That's it for today. So we're gonna play out with the boys. So come back and join us again as soon as you can. Bye bye. I just lay here Would you lie with me And just forget the world Forget what we're told Before we get too old You show me a garden That's bursting into life Don't quite know how to say how I feel.
feel Those real words Said too much But not enough If I lay here If I just lay here Would you lie with me And just forget the world Show me a garden that's bursting into life Let's waste time Chasing cars Around our head If I lay here If I just lay you lie with me and just forget the world Forget what we told before we get too old Just show me a garden that's bursting into life and All that I am, all that I ever I don't know where Confused about how as well Just know that these things will never change for us at all Yay. <laughs> <laughs>